Hi, today's October 22nd, 2011. My name is James Leone, and I'm following up on a pretty thin set of leads I already have already on the Johnson family that ended up in McCracken County and primarily uh, the descendants of Obadiah Johnson. He was buried at the Shepherd Cemetery. And just to review, there are, to my mind, two possible uh, paths that could lead to you know uh, Obadiah Johnson's ancestry. One of which is, um, to my mind, probably more likely, um, but certainly isn't certain. And the other one is uh, has been asserted and could be right, but there's to me there's a hole in the argument in that Obadiah Johnson is missing in the 1850 census, but it's not unheard of. Um, that's about it. For everything else, I think the arguments are just about even, except for the one I'm proposing has an Obadiah Johnson living in a household with a dad, whereas the other one doesn't. Um, at least in the 1850 census where you can see it and not presume that he's living there in the 1840 census, as with Thomas Johnson. I went over that in an earlier video. Okay, so I followed up, and I, assuming, you know, I'm, that I'm right, I'm following up on, on my line, because the other line's been researched. And... And because I, I happen to think that this is the, the right line. And that, that line leads back to Robert Johnson, who lived in Smith County, Tennessee. Um, and he's, he dies by 1860, and <laughs> that's, that's it. And Obadiah is, takes off, and he's living in Kentucky, and then he moves over to McCracken by 1870 in 1860s. He's working on a farm, and he gets married in a year, then he moves over in 1870, uh, under my theory. Uh, but again, I'm going to say that my theory isn't foolproof. And trying to uh, research some ancestry for for Robert, this Robert Johnson that appears in 1850, I'm pretty hard-pressed. Uh, just by conventional means... Um, Pretty much, uh, I'm not finding a grave for him or his wife anywhere that I can see that's transcribed or, or photographed or anything of that nature. Um, I have a little bit of, uh, there is a ANIS, I think it's their, la their last name, Dash Johnson Cemetery. It was cleaned up by a baseball team maybe eight years back or five years back. It's, it's around Columbia. Uh, Maury County, Tennessee. Um, where he might be buried in one of the unmarked graves. There's a number of them there. Or there's implied there might be a number of them there. They, they just don't know. And that's kind of with the style that Obadiah had. But remember that primarily the shepherds were, <laughs> were buried in that cemetery. And Obadiah is just an incidental spouse to one of the shepherds. So I wouldn't necessarily say that that was his style, and certainly his children didn't uh, go with that style on their graves. They all have uh, birth years, death years, even dates on it. So, you know, I it's not really an indication to my mind. If it was, even though they call it Johnson Cemetery now, I I, I, can, I know by the other people that are there, it's it, you know, the burial there is by virtue of his marriage to Nancy Shepherd, daughter of Thomas Shepherd. So, in all the searching that I've done, there's there's been one set of records that have been compiled together. And it's this, it's called Johnston's, Johnston's from Kraskeben to Missouri. And it's been submitted by a guy named Randy McConnell, and I think that he's done the best that's possible with the records that are available. But I guess I'm, uh, I'm still going to have to say that there are, just, there are some pretty big holes and some assumptions in, in the whole thing. And 
you know, granted, probably the only way to solve out who Robert's parents may be is by working down. And he does have some good information that tends to point back to the idea that this um, Robert Johnson was the son of a Gideon Johnson, who in turn was the son of an Abner Johnson, who was a Revolutionary War veteran. But there's one disconnect um, that I don't necessarily agree with in, in this whole thing, and that is that mainly for purposes of the line that I'm going up, uh, that Randy, that at this Abner was the son of uh, Gideon Johnson and his wife, um, I think it was Ursula Allen, if I remember right. Because when I look at, <laughs> I, I don't have a copy of the original will. I haven't been able to get my hands on it. Um, supposedly he died in Rockingham County, North Carolina, and the US Gen website is 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 probably less. It's one of it's one of the many county sites in U.S. Gen Web. Unfortunately, aren't very useful. Um, now, if he's right, he he very well could be right. I, I mean, I'm just saying that you know the proof is lack, lacking in certain respects, and I'll I'll address that, um, and also make a general comment about genealogy in the South. <laughs> Basically, um, unfortunately, um, the state of the records are. Um, I, there's, there's just some leaps here that I, I just can't really agree with. So I, I, you know, again, if I had maybe if I had the original copy of Gideon Johnson's will. Um, I would see that Abner is named as a son, but I've come across the only thing I've been able to cross are a few loosely put together transcriptions that are posted on a couple message boards, and one seems to be a little more complete than the other, and the one that seems to be a little more complete doesn't have mention of any Abner in there, but a Mordecai, and I almost drew the conclusion that. The Mordecai listed in here is that's said to be Mordecai Morgan is actually Abner, but Abner is Abner M. That's the only way I could say okay, this is the same family. Or whoever transcribed the record just missed transcribing Abner. I don't know, um, <coughs> but. You know, the, pro the problem with, with some of the genealogies in the South are pretty much twofold, is that you got a lot of incomplete records. The only remaining records are very weak, at best. And they're somehow cited as proof, and then they go with the best answer they can find. They can come up with, and they, and they move on. In some cases, in other their cases, it's very well documented and proven out. There's just one or two things here or there that spoils the whole bunch. And so, I, I went through this and tried to work my way down. And finally, when I looked over Abner, I'm um, sorry, uh, Gideon Johnson's will, and didn't see there was an Abner in there, I knew that I was assuming that Abner's middle name was Mordecai. And still, I, I have yet to answer <laughs> how I can make Mordecai Morgan the same person as Abner in this outline here it just doesn't work. So, and then, even the guy that put this together, uh, the best he can say is that, well, probably a son of, there is another Gideon, of uh, Gideon Jr. Um, might have been this robber living with his wife, you know, um, and son Obadiah and, and William and all that. So, short of going into Dyer County, Tennessee, <laughs> and who knows how and how complete the records are, even if they're legible, and I'll get into all that. Um, it's gonna be hard to really draw a conclusion, and, and still the the link between this Robert Johnson and the Obadiah that went to Kentucky isn't really certain. 
I, I, I'm not giving up on it. I, I certainly feel it's a better link than than the Thomas Johnson they're they're saying is the ancestor down there in the Kraken. You know, there were other Johnsons in Kentucky, a lot of them. There also a lot of <laughs> there also were a lot of uh, Johnsons in Maury County, <laughs> even as late as 1840. So um, it's 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 just it's a sad fact that you know, Okay, here's the state of the state of records in Tennessee are as follows, at least to my mind. For the most part, there is there there are some if okay if you find if for your ancestor you're able to find a marriage record, and if for your ancestor you're able to find their gravesite, and you can get the hell out of Tennessee <laughs> with their parents. <laughs> you are in good shape. Uh, from my experience, the idea is get the hell out of Tennessee as soon as possible because there's a lot of missing records and of the records that are out there, they are just in the, the most horrifically imaginable shape as far as the writing, uh, the scans, I mean, have ink bleeding through the back and so you have like crisscrossed at almost the same color uh, records, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, So I guess I'll just go over this and what, what happened to Robert Johnson and his family that I know of. And, you know, assuming the story that Obadiah left after they died, I don't really have a death record for Robert Johnson. I have, uh, at least Robert Johnson I'm interested in. I have one very odd record that comes out of um, a book that was written. Let's see if I can find Robert Johnson's packet here. Probably should have this done before, but them's the brakes. Here it is. Okay. He's living with a Lucinda at the time. Right here. And there's a there's a Gideon and that that's a that that is a, a promising name. Um, Patty, I don't know where they would get that from. Now these are loose pieces of evidence that, that, that they're gonna lead back and you know, they're gonna be part of the rest of the talk. So let's keep this in mind. We've got a name Gideon. That's pretty much almost mm, William. Okay, these two names kind of seem to come from other families in the line. That has the, the only person that's put anything together that includes this family, which is in this narrative here. Now I'm not saying this family should be not included. I, I have more problems with it further up. Well, I mean, in a lot of steps. There's a lot of holes in the record in, in, in Tennessee. So, you know, what he's doing is going with the the best he can do. And then near nearby, there's an Edward C. And that the explanation of that makes sense, but it isn't proven. Now, I, I've got a questionable record here from Tennessee Tidbits, Volume 4, where there is a Robert Johnson that died around the time, I think. And as far as I know, this is... I don't know MRL Tennessee. I don't. I don't know what that is. Um, maybe it's. I don't know. There's so many counties in Tennessee, but if this happens to be Maury, I don't think it is. But if it happened to be, it kind of looks, you know, um, deceptively applicable. <laughs> You know, here I have a census record of a Robert Johnson in 1850 who was gone by 1860. Um, Loretta instead of Lucinda, but I have names of children that don't really work that well. But they could have been born since then, and they're calling the the um, surviving spouse Susan instead of you know. So now now we got to start diverging. I right, Lucinda, here's a Susan. 
and we get a William and Eliza, well, Elizabeth and William, we don't have a Gideon, you know, there's a lot of different things that just aren't really missing here to make it not very a clean, you know, connection. Now, what I can tell, one important piece of information in this whole thing, is that the sun looks like a chicken's, just looks like someone went like this, but... The transcribers has uh, you know has interpreted that as William, and I am ready to accept that. And it says that this William is idiotic. Okay, so what does that have to do with anything? Well, there happened to be in that county. God, I got so much crap here. A poorhouse. And here's a Gideon that doesn't even appear till 1880. <laughs> Different county, wife Rebecca, I don't know. Same Gideon or not? I have no idea. There could have been other Gideons. But here in the 1860 census, we have an, a Henry Johnson. And the guy that put together this genealogy says that Henry Johnson was a a son of Gideon, and as was um, as was Robert. In fact, he he thinks he knows that Henry Johnson was a son, whereas he don't know doesn't know Robert was. But it seems like it was. And in this household with Henry, which I haven't read to see whether he married a Nancy or not, there is a William Johnson, age twenty one. He was 11 in the last census, and he's idiotic. And this was a pauper house for um in Murray County, Tennessee, where people that didn't have enough money to take care of themselves lived in this house and were taken care of for by the county. And then there's actually someone went about <laughs> and took the time back in 98 to transcribe various pages from Murray County Cousins, Volume 2, and talks, it talks about inmates at the poorhouse in 1851 William Johnson isn't there in 1853 he is and so I thought well Robert probably died between November 7th 1851 and 15 November 18, 18, 1853 and he continues to live there this William until you know, here at least 1761 there's another entry for 1854 and then I think I even found uh, Record here somewhere that I'll probably struggle to find because I'm on camera um, that has his burial. They paid for a pauper's coffin. Um, and now I can't find it. <laughs> Much my papers, but I know it's there. So he was ended up being buried, and, and the, the, the amount of records I'm able to get compared to other places are just not that rich. So, so for example, for Obadiah, who I think I found, you know, in Kentucky, you have your marriage record, your death record, you get your birth date from the death record, you get a tombstone, you know, you get census records going all the way through, and this is for Obadiah, and, and most of this pack is just Obadiah. I have got some information, he's in the Civil War, help people couldn't find his dad, maybe they could find this, and then when I get down to the next son that's in here, Gideon, who married a Rebecca, I can't even find a marriage record for, he's not even, I can't even prove it's the same Gideon, because he's not even in the 1860, 1870 censuses, he's in a completely different county, he is of the same age, but there could be other Gideons. Johnson's common last name. So I'd have to go through and I have to now do a, a check of every Gideon that appears in the 1860 and 1870 census and try to narrow those down if I can get to it. You know, it's not going to be easy. It looks like he lived under 1900. Here it is. Okay, so I got this one out of order. There, here is his, in 1867, William, the son, they paid for his coffin. So maybe he died in 1866. I don't know, but I got him as 1839 to 1867. Now, have I found a grave for this for him? No, no grave at all. Next son is Alvin, who's just 
gone. <laughs> um, there's a big gap, same gap I have with Gideon. But now there, here's an Alvin. Um, he's missing for 20 years, completely different county. I don't know if it's the same guy. Maybe it is, maybe the only, the only, the only thing connecting him back to the original records is age. Then we get a Patty Johnson, he's just gone. I tried Patrick, that didn't work, nothing. I did find an Elizabeth Johnson who might have married a Samuel Mills, but there is nothing after that. They're completely gone. Now, and here, here's, here's the record, and this one is remarkably, the writing is remarkably much better than most other samples of writing you're ever going to see out of Tennessee anywhere at any time on any page but the black splotches that infect this goddamn thing are just like most of the records that come out of Tennessee okay so assuming this guy's right and I say okay well let's assume this guy's guess is right and Robert Johnson was the son of Gideon uh, who is the son of Abner, son of Gideon. It's... I've mostly focused... So far, mostly what I've focused on are... Not that Gideon. I, I, I went up and I was going to work my way back down. But uh, the Gideon that was the father of Abner, who was the father of Gideon, who was might be the father of Robert, <laughs> who might be the father of Obadiah that went to Kentucky. He is the father of an Obadiah, we don't know if he's the one who went to Kentucky. And it's too hot. Um, so let's, let's look at that set, right? Because it, it's, it's an interesting set. If it's, if it's all the same people, there were three sons, or there are three uh, Revolutionary War pension files that, that, that affect this line, if this is the same set. So I'll just go over this. So here we are, we got a Gideon Johnson that was born either 1717 or about. We have an exact birth date for Ursula and Nancy Allen that I haven't even checked the propriety of, and that probably should be spelled A-L-L-I-N. Then we got the first. <laughs> and there, there's one thing wrong with this, and I don't know. I don't know if this is the person that puts this together has seen the original will or not. They just kind of work hard, do their best, accept things that other people say, and they just put it together. And sometimes there are problems. And there's one little mark in Gideon Johnson's will that's very important. So maybe we'll just go over that first. So this happens to be... This is another problem. There was... In Gideon Johnson's will, he, he names a grandchild... Uh, Anne Deathridge. Oh, is that it? No, no. Ursula Deathridge. So the Deathridge family has assumed that they are. I don't know if they've assumed. I mean, they're going. They're using that as evidence. They don't know what the connection is. But they know that <coughs> that who were you know whatever branch of the family had an Ursula as a mother. They know that you know they're. The grandfather was Gideon Johnson, and you know, so that's why they're talking about it here. And this was the one of two transcriptions of the wills that appeared in this uh, message board, and this one seemed to be a correction of the other one. And he basically says, you know, I, I, you know, name of God, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I'm Gideon Johnson. Doesn't have his. He makes it on October of 1807, which is where this guy gets at. That's an exact date. Um, perhaps. <laughs> I 
and it doesn't say when this was proved, which is another big problem. So now we just kind of say he died in October 1807, but we don't. We, he could have lasted a little bit longer. We just don't know. And he here we've got two of my four sons, William, comma, Allen, comma, Mordecai, comma, and Peter, comma, Johnson, comma. Then they named the children. So all, all the children seem to correspond, and you know, and just like him, I haven't been able to find anything about the the daughter Condon. So you know, let's get back to this this list here. So we have the first one of the daughters he he marries, and we've just assumed she's the eldest born. I don't know if we really have exact dates, and I think sometimes we're just sliding people in to conveniently match the names when it comes to the sons. But I'll get to that. So we have Elizabeth Johnson, who they say married to James Ray, W R R A Y, and you know we we have this uh, Elizabeth Ray, five daughters, one of five, Elizabeth Ray, in his will. But that's the only proof you have <laughs> these days. You know the the census back in eight, there wasn't a, well. There might have been a census back in 1800, but only have the head of the household there, and that's it. Um, so let's see. What, you know, what do we have as far as proof uh, for, for um, Elizabeth Johnson and, and James Ray? And well, we do have the someone that has gone in and looked at some of the county court records for Rowan County, North Carolina, that are microfilmed and house the family history library and put them into ancestry.com. We don't know who, we don't know who's checked them, Well, maybe we have. Um, something by Jordan Dodd. So I guess Jordan Dodd compiled this, compiled it, but who's checked his, the actually of his, of his compilation, I don't know. Here's another redundant it says it comes out of the North Carolina State Archives, but again, we have the, the um, same source citations down. It isn't clear, and there's a some something out of the Register of Deeds. It's got well, if you look at R. E. Y. James and Johnson Elizabeth, nine twenty nine seventeen sixty three. So we have a marriage record. It seems like that's three or five, five hard to read because it's it's blotchy. <laughs> so we have a transcription risk at every point. We don't have the original record. We have the risk that someone has mistranscribed the record from wherever they got it from. We don't know where that is and put it into the county record or into the book. But the risk is mitigated because we have a man that's looked at the family history library film Independent of the county, you know, uh, this county in uh, Rowan County, North Carolina, that's transcribed it, and we've come with the same answer. So it's probably right. Okay, that's it. I have no other information as to what happened to them, where they went. Nothing. It's just they're gone. And this is what happens in the South. <laughs> they could have both been killed in the Civil War. I don't know. They could have lived for a really, really long time. I don't know. The next child is this uh, William Allen Johnson, as he has it. Well, as Will says, there's actually two John And I went by what this guy said at first to set this up. There should be two of them. So the, the William Johnson... I know what happened to him. I think... I'm pretty sure, and he ended up in being buried at the Enos Johnson Cemetery in Kolioka County, Mori, in Kolioka, Mori County, Tennessee. And Kolioka happens to be the same city that this pauper house is, where the quote-unquote idiotic other William, his cousin, was living with what Randy McConnell says was um, 
his uncle, keeper keeper of the house. Right here. And of course, I don't find William Johnson in the 1870 census because they paid for his casket. <laughs> okay, so as far as Alan Johnson, his son Alan, I, I don't know. It, it also could be a mistranscription. It may not be Alan, it may actually be Abner. Abner, I don't know. Now, getting back to this, first thing is at the beginning, it's going to look good here. We do have, I do have a marriage record from Gulford, North Carolina, but that's all I have. I don't have a cross reference with, with that, but it says it's uh, Sarah McLaren. Then there is here at the Johnson Amos Cemetery in Kolioka, there is a memorial to William Johnson. And it says when he died and when he was born. It doesn't say who his dad was, but no gravestone's really going to do that. I didn't expect it. Now, this cemetery was in pretty bad shape. And there was some local baseball team that went in there and cleaned it up. And I don't remember exactly when that was, but there, you know, it's on this web page. If you search for the Johnson Am Amos Cemetery, Kalioka, you'll find the picture of the before and after. They did the cleanup job. Here's Sarah, that we assume is the, the wife of the William who married Sarah McLaurin on this record, and that this guy, Randy McConnell, is put together and said is the son of um, Gideon and Ursula Nancy Allen. Well, the one thing I'm missing for purposes of our, <laughs> of the line that, that, that I'm interested in that got to McCracken County, Kentucky, is Abner. I'm, I'm not seeing him here. Now, there's some other records that I'm going to go through, and, you know, but the, at the end of the day, it's it, it's stated nowhere as fact. He doesn't, you know, people write summaries of these uh, pensions, but when you look at the original records, I, I can't decipher where he says he's got a brother or sister that he testifies for. He certainly testifies for them. They were in the war, but he doesn't make it clear. Now, the next child is an Ursula Mary Johnson, who was said to have married John Pillow, and John Pillow was supposedly killed by Indians, and Ursula um, passed on having the will administrated in favor of, I think, a William Pillow. I'm not exactly sure. And this Ursula Mary Johnson, actually, I don't even know where the Mary comes from. It's just Ursula most of the time I've seen it is the grandmother of a very famous Civil War general named Gideon Johnson Pillow. Um, <laughs> he's a pretty brutal, <laughs> pretty brutal general. I don't know what side he fought on, but of course we'll find out because I do have the National Cycle of American Biography, which is, you know, which is secondhand unless they interviewed the guy himself. You know, I, I just don't know. He's a famous person, so it's almost a matter of historical fact. And it's got here the grandmother of the subject, the sketches of Mary Johnson of Virginia, not North Carolina, and her father and three brothers served in the Revolutionary War, and then that's all they really talk about it. And, you know, they kind of, I mean, the family seemed to move around a lot. Now, one thing I, I that I found was just absolutely unbelievable. I'll get, I'll get to you on the next one. Well, it should be unbelievable, but but historically it, it, it it's factual. But we'll, you know, let's go on the next one. Um, this kind of talks about the pillows, but doesn't exactly directly say he was killed by Indians. It just, it just There were some Indian fights in 1794, and that was a good, oh, hell when he drawn a pillow die.
he, I, I did find a court record where his estate was being administrated in October 9, of 1793. Around that time, there were some Indian fights around 1793, but it certainly doesn't really prove it. This is this was the letter here in this little account uh, that I was able to find was written a whole year later in 1794. This this here has the inventory of John Pillow, of A. John Pillow. It is in Davidson County, so that's where Nashville is. Probably a good chance, okay? Um, then there's some memoirs of, of Major Scott, and yet whoever edited this did some research. We don't know where they got the information from. And kind of goes into the Pillow family background and mentions Ursula Johnson. But doesn't it just says he was killed in the fall of 1793? But it didn't really explicitly name. In fact, maybe I think I think they were the parents of this general. Oh no, no, they were the grandparents. They were the grandparents of this general. Then there's a lineage book with the daughters of the American Revolution. Just whoever put this together asserted that they were the great great granddaughter of John Pillow, but how Miss Louise Porter Phillips knew that back in 1906 when these people were born <laughs> in the late 1700s is beyond me. <laughs> Nonetheless, I looked very hard and I finally, it took me a long time to find this. I finally found where um, the next brother, the only thing I really have on this, now it's said that this Gideon Johnson married a Mary Baker de Graffenreed, de Graffenreed and gives an exact date and says it was at Rockingham County, North Carolina. Well, you, they didn't get that from the Revolutionary War pension file, I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> she predeceased him, and she wasn't trying to prove that she was um, a um, surviving spouse. Uh, there is no marriage record to be found in an original form. It's all just what people have asserted. And where they get the assertions from, I don't know. It's lost with time, and it's now packaged as the family data collection. To me, it means nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no proof behind that. Um, which is the problem. When you don't... If you have a record and it's not brought forward with what this, what it actually was, or a transcription of the record, it's meaningless after a while. So when you're putting your genealogies together today, uh, 100 years from now, someone else, you know... <laughs> My sister's grandson might say that I was married, or that I was, or that I was the the son of Richard Leone, you know. But um, born on such and such a date, but if they don't find my birth certificate. They don't really know that was true. How do they know? And they have, you know, secondhand information. So the, to me, the fam anyway, ancestry's family data collection to me is absolutely worthless. I, I don't go by it. Sometimes I find the original records and it matches up somewhat with the family data collection. But if it doesn't, it doesn't mean squat. I want to know where they got the record from. Did they get the record? In some cases, they do get the record from Revelation of War pension files. Um, in fact, that'll be the case with um, the daughter of Nancy who married James Cotton. She finally realizes that unless she invents a marriage date, she's not going to get her pension, so she does. I don't know, I'm not even sure if it's the actual date. <laughs> but we have one. <laughs> okay. Now, this one, this is the fourth child, supposed fourth child, um, Gideon, who marries Mary. That I haven't seen any records of him having a wife named Mary anywhere, because the evidence is sparse. Um, supposedly, I don't even know, 
I haven't even been able to see a will of his. I think I know when he died. In fact, I'm pretty sure I knew when he died. And when he was born, I know he's the same man as the pension file, only because of his grave. So here in someone's backyard on Delvin Drive in Nashville, <laughs> is a transcription of a man named Gideon Johnson. He was a private. Fought in the Revolutionary War. Right, he was born November 7th, 1754. Died November 1st, 1843. Living buried near the Chadwells. Okay. Um, now, apparently, Gideon's daughter, Nancy, married a George Chadwell. We'll, we'll find out We'll find out that's true, because we get some more information. So here's a picture of someone's home in the picket fence. <laughs> With um, eight listings. And here's a far view of Gideon Johnson there, and that's as close up as you get. And there he is, buried. Gideon Johnson. There's a couple of stones that just look like rocks with a W and an F in it, and that's it. Now, what had happened in Tennessee was that for a long time it was just brand new territory. People were separated far and wide, and well. <laughs> For a while there, they didn't really have stonemasons, so they didn't get gravestones. Later on, they probably couldn't afford it. Now, here's a court record that was kind of interesting. And this verifies the death date of this Gideon Jr. here. Which is probably some of the most complete records that I have, because partially because I have a gravestone. And partially because there was... Well, some, you know, you do a close up of this and realize that I have no proof whatsoever about any information about the wife or the marriage date. This is a court case Johnson versus Chadwell. A court in, at Franklin. There was some kind of dispute with the estate of Gideon Johnson, basically, and there were people claiming that he owed money at the end of his life, and there was a dispute. Was he under duress? Was he mentally incompetent at the time? And basically, at the end of the day, they said, yeah, he was mentally incompetent. And they didn't allow that debt. They went all the way to the Supreme Court of Tennessee. And here is George Chadwell buried in the same backyard as, <laughs> as our Gideon here. And, you know, it even mentions he died November 1843. Now, I don't know where they get November 1st. Probably shouldn't be November 1st, at least by this record. Now, had this man not fought in the Revolutionary War, I wouldn't be able to place that court record in context of what he has. So he's got a pretty big Revol Revolutionary War pension file. Here. <laughs> and Ancestry's finally got these up. It used to be you can only go to Heritage Quest to download the files, and in some cases, the scans that are up there at Heritage Quest really, they're pretty, pretty potmarked. They're, they're pretty, at times they're pretty poor. These are better in certain respects, but in some cases, the blotch, the black blotches come through a lot stronger, so you're better off keeping the Heritage Quest version. 
Now, in these pension files, they have two sets of records. One are called selected records, and the other ones are called non-selected records. And I guess the selected records include items they consider proof for awarding the pension, whereas the other items are con not considered proof for the pension, but they still may be useful to you. <laughs> now, on the, ones, on the copy of this page, uh, see all these little black spots everywhere here. Well, it doesn't have that in the original, but it has so much black discoloration. Otherwise, on the one that came from Ancestry, it was not It was better for me to keep the one from Heritage Quest. These, this page is from Heritage Quest. Quest. These style, files are huge, and some of it's just about payments. Some of it ha happens to be testimony, and so here he goes into his... Um, he says he was eight, he'll be age 78, November 7th, 1832, which gives him a birth year of 1754. So that's when we get November 7th there. But later on, he just comes out and says it. Uh, I was born, and I have been informed by my father, who he doesn't say who he is. I wish he did. Uh, that he was born in Amelia County, Virginia. Oh, okay. Uh, 7th day of November, 1754. But you can see, if you just look at the writing on this, between the blotchy ink and the just, got chicken scratch at times, and what the hell does this say? It's it's hard to get, get things out. I mean, this, look at this. I mean, it looks like it might have looked decent at one point. If you struggle with it, you can get through it, but it certainly isn't easy reading. Um, this is just a record of what he did. And some people have gone about transcribing what's in here. Here's a typewritten letter to someone that was interested in Robert Martin McBride. I, you know, I don't know what the connection is. These are non-selected records. <laughs> Look at that. Now, the blessing of having mess, messy writing that, like myself, I can somewhat make out what the hell they're saying, but for the most part, this looks, this looks like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, and you can see how it bleeds in the back, and all of these things, and, and a lot of this is just stuff no one really cares about, you know, yes to no for his qualification for the purposes of whatever law they were trying to, or just inquiries, or just... You know, unless you're um, interested in the nuances of the battles of the Revolutionary War, it's not necessarily all that interesting. If you're just trying to find the birth, marriage, and death date, which you, should, you would think you'd be able to get out of a church record or a county reporter like they do in Massachusetts, but no, you're in the middle of nowhere. And so, in here, here's an, uh, an affidavit for Abner Johnson that has been said is the brother. This day personally appeared before James Walker's uh, Justice of the Peace, Forsyth County, uh, Abner Johnson, who is, after being duly sworn, according to have that he knows that and Grant and Kessusuthe uh, attends the court in Williams County that he himself, a soldier of the Revolutionary War, that he served on tour as a guard for the governor of North Carolina with Gideon Johnson that he knows the fact that the said Gideon Johnson was a soldier of the revolution that he is well 
acquainted with Gideon Johnson and knows that he has always been reputed as a soldier of the revolution and <coughs> undoubtful veracity. So he has reason to believe that the said, the said Gideon Johnson served uh, at least 12 months as a regular soldier in South Carolina. And he signs it. Now, what's wrong with that? I would think of these as brother would say, I, I know Gideon Johnson, he's he's my brother. <laughs> and I, I I fought with him in the war. Not that oh I'm well acquainted with the guy, he's got a good reputation. I'm not saying he's his brother. Well the only reason why I can even imagine why he wouldn't say that it's his brother is that somehow they wouldn't believe him because he is his brother, right? He's lying for him because he's his brother. I mean, he's afraid that would happen, right? I'm supposed to read the mind of someone giving testimony back then. All I know is that he isn't providing evidence that it's his brother. That's all I need, you know, <laughs> right? See what else we have to say. Now, some of these transcriptions claim that he says he's a brother. It's just Gideon Johnson's testimony. More horrifically difficult things to read. I know down here Yeah, it doesn't really go on to assert that. Now, here's another transcription. I know I saw somewhere in here someone just saying brother. But I really don't necessarily. Yeah, until I see that on an original piece of documentation, it doesn't mean anything. Guess not. But it's being assumed. So we're missing the statement that he was a brother. He might have been a cousin. But brother, I... I I don't know. So, but Gideon names the son Gideon, so, you know, we're okay. We're missing an Alan. We're missing a Mordecai. Abner could be Alan or Mordecai. Okay, here's Abner. These things are so huge. And it says rejected pension application file, but it, we're talking about Nancy, who was rejected. Abner did, did get a pension. Nancy probably shouldn't have been. They just put her through the, the rigmarole. Testimony has to be certain in an exact way, has to be stated in an exact way, or proof of marriage has to be supplied, and if it's not, well, too bad. <laughs> now, for Abner, let's go over to Abner, who I have no reason to believe he even belongs in here, except for his birthday kind of fits in with all these abouts and 
kind ofs and afters and all this other crap. So who knows? Um, we, I did find a marriage record, I think. Did I find the nasty bracket? Yeah, I'm not going to say I did find it. Let's see. He is what? Number five. Um, no. Didn't find a marriage record for him and Nancy Brackett. I've been given an exact date, but doesn't mean a damn thing until I actually have some kind of verification of records people are asserting. So it works kind of neat if someone um, wants to make their... I'm not saying that good old... Uh, Name. Randy McConnell has made this date up, but if you want to make something look authentic, you just add a March and a, <laughs> or a February or a July or something, put a day in front there, and suddenly it kind of looks right. Right? <laughs> but but I, I I haven't found marriage date between uh, Abner and Nancy Brackett. I have no basis to say her last name's Brackett. What her birth date? What her uh, there was a mother. That's for sure. Okay, her name, her first name was Nancy, and that's it. That's all I know. At least for now. Now, I might find it here in the, in the pension file, but I certainly didn't find it in um, the Rockingham County records. Anyway, this looks great. It's the kind of thing you have to work with out of Tennessee. So my advice to you is uh, go back in time and tell your ancestor to get the hell out of Tennessee so you can do some fucking genealogy. All right, no, I'm not being serious. Okay, now here's Nancy Johnson. She's appearing, testifying, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, here we are. Okay, so she says that she married uh, Abner. Okay, that's where we got it. Uh, fourth day of March, 1783, and he died 22nd day of October, 1850. That's the only place we get that information. We don't have a gravestone. We don't really, we, I haven't really found a marriage record out of Rockingham County, North Carolina. That's where I get it from. That's the only place. And I have don't have any good solid proof that this Abner was the son of Gideon. I have uh, evidence against it both by the contents of Gideon's Revolutionary War pension file, in which Abner, when he testifies, neglects to mention him as a brother. Um, and the, the, the will of a supposed father who forgot he had a son named Abner. Perhaps. <laughs> Don't know. And they, she repeats it, 4th day of March, 1783s, and they marry, that's a three. It's not a five. It's a C. And we can tell he had a fine record. <laughs> now, one important... Okay, now this is... Um, now this... Abner did have a brother named William. And he lived in Maury County. And... Gideon mentions the son, William, in his will, and an owl. that I don't have. What that tells me is either we get a mistranscription, we have a will that's very hard to read, and therefore Abner's there, but we just can't see it, or we get two different families. One family that's the children of Gideon, and another family who we don't know who the father is, but their two of the sons are Abner and William. We don't know. Why don't we know? So I think the records are horribly incomplete. <laughs> 
in Tennessee. It hasn't been explained who Alex Johnson is. As far as I know. Here's some of his testimony. Again, it's just so hard to read. I don't know how anybody could claim they've done a transcription of this. Or this. It's just... It would take a very long time to clean that up and get the other crap out of there. Probably something like GIMP. And there she is living in Columbia, which is in Mor you know, uh, Maury County. The problem is I'm not finding a grave for either of these people. They banked at Union Bank in Tennessee. In fact, both of these, um, I noticed that Abner and Gideon kind of repeated each other's testimony, almost word for word. Okay, that's it for that. And then there's a there's a Nancy Cotton, and the same kind of thing happens with Nancy Cotton. Nancy Johnson marries uh, James Cotton. Out of the pension, we maybe the marriage records on the book, but out of the pension application, we get his birth date as exact as that is. We get a death date. Now this one actually, now I remember it. The marriage record is between James Cotton and a Nancy John, and there's somewhere in the pension file where the the authority in Washington D.C. got in touch with. With a county, I think it'd be, they got in touch with Rowan County or something like that, and it ends up that they said we can't find anything. Well, there could be one or two reasons for that. And one of the reasons is at least the way it's been indexed here, number six. Nancy John. Well, someone was lazy and they didn't decide to put Nancy Johnson, <laughs> just Nancy John, <coughs> into the pension file. Finally, after years of being denied the pension, she was finally able to come up with her marriage date as being. 20 December 1786, and a lot of people have that on their web pages. Um, but you have them, don't know where they got it from. But uh, yeah, the, the, it's derived from the contents of, of, of uh, James Cotton's Revolutionary War pension file. So the, the only reason why I know, or it's like November, so the only reason why I know it's right is because she's about the right time there. I don't know if she's in the right place. And then let's look at this one interesting thing. The kind of things that people had to go through to get their pensions filled was just ridiculous. She she pleads with the guy, would you please give me my pension somewhere in here? Some of this is just absolutely unreadable. But, um, She ended up moving to Alabama, and in 1850, she's living with the Lewis family, which I find interesting in one way, but not necessarily, well, indicative, because it's too far. Now, here's Abner Johnson again. God. 1845. Look at that signature. <laughs> um... The Holy Evangelists. I don't know what the hell he says here. So I'm a Holy Evangelist. No one care. I mean, look at that. There's your proof for a pension. Imagine if your Social Security depended on something like that. Here it is. 20th December 1846. 
No, that is not. My off, okay. Uh, this is Rockingham County. They were married in Guilford County, by the way. Um, so, I, JB, something, clerk of the county court of please, uh, quarter far as said county, have certain that I have made. Uh, probably diligent, I don't know, search for the marriage of Mr. Cotton, but have not been able to find any record in my office. But find a ceremony to the to his information that I can he had the marriage between Mr. Cotton and Miss Nancy Cotton was in the same year that this county was partitioned in the year 1786 when such papers were loosely kept blah 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 okay so I guess Rockingham County cut off from Guilford County, and this kind of thing happens. And so, yeah, they may have been married in Rockingham County, but when Rockingham County split off from Guilford, they didn't bother to transfer the papers over from Guilford to Rockingham. Of course, you couldn't find the record. Plus, even if he did look, he'd probably find a Nancy John and not a Nancy Johnson. But in her case, it might work because she wouldn't. If, you know, he, she's looking for Miss Nancy. He's looking for Miss Nancy Cotton, so that wouldn't have been a problem. But that can that can happen. So sometimes you have to be very careful what county you're looking at, especially in some of these counties that get split and split and split and split and split. You may find that the record you're looking for is way over in the far east of Kentucky when when Kentucky was just a county in Virginia at <laughs> times. So. And that's why some some records don't come up, and then you always get the excuse, "Oh, so the records were destroyed in fire," but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, all the time. And certainly, that marriage record wasn't destroyed in fire. It, it's in, it's in a different county than it uh, archives, and it probably should be because there were never moves. I can tell you that much. <laughs> when Rockingham split from Guilford, those records weren't moved with it. Next child purportedly from well, Gideon Johnson is Judith. I just got so many papers here. I don't think I have anything on her except for Gideon's will naming her as a daughter that, and that she married a Condon, but I can't find any any record whatsoever. Now getting back to Mary Baker de Graffen Reed, there was one post on one of these message boards that said she first married guy named maybe William T I didn't even keep it because I couldn't even use it. I don't even know if it's true. Um, the different last names start with a T if or what it was. Don't go go search for it. You'll find it on some message but don't go don't think I'm the last authority on anything if you want to look. Um, and then we got this Naomi who's named and there's nothing else known and she lived as long and then there's a Peter Benjamin. Now the guy that put this thing together said that all five of the children of Gideon fought in the Revolutionary War. Well, I don't have evidence to support that. I only have evidence for three, at least as far as the pensions are concerned. And some of these individuals live long enough to apply for pensions, especially uh, maybe Peter here. He probably should have applied for pension and would have applied for pension, but he didn't. So that tells me that this Peter didn't. And even though some of the uh, hit the the stories about um, Gideon Johnson Pillow, who was the general, say that uh, 
five of his uh, grandmother's brothers fought in the Revolutionary War. I just have evidence for three. If the guy that did this thing is actually right, but again, Abner and Gideon aren't saying they're brothers. They're brothers. William's widowed wife, Sarah, is saying they're, that William was the brother, I think. <laughs> Actually, i got to look at that and see if I'm just assuming that's correct because I read it somewhere. <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> Come on, Abner, where are you? And there's just so many papers. There's just so many papers to dig through. Okay. Uh, Widow of William Johnson. Deceased husband was a single man living immediately in the. Okay, brother. No, neighborhood of deponent. Her husband. Um. No, I don't even think she even says. Explicitly, that this is a brother. Yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> so none, none of them really admit that they're brothers. I don't know. I don't know if that was part of the strategy or, or not. But at least with all these piles of papers I have here, I'm not getting well an answer. <laughs> Explicit answer. I don't have. I, I do have a will, and of, of the will that I have, it's just a transcription. Then two of them. Uh, one seems to be sloppier than the other. Um, both seem to be sloppy in certain regards because they don't have the date that that it was proved. Um, looking in the Maury County, Tennessee, published will book over here, I absolutely am not finding. The wills I was hoping to find. And then sometimes we have these published books, like here, here we got, you know, I think this guy is getting his information partially from a book like this. Okay, it's in a book, it's right. You know, it's got the, you know, who knows, I have no idea whether this actually happened and you just don't know where to find the records or what. And but there's a lot of just missing. Like here, it's got over here that she's Mary Baker, the daughter of of uh, Baker de Graffenried. Here it asserts that um, that Gideon Johnson died in Williamson County, but his gravestone is in Nashville in Davidson County. Um, so those kind of things I've seen before, but when you get to a point where you just you're, you're completely lacking <coughs> a lot of records, and you don't have enough information about Rockingham County to say that was the only Gideon, or you can't, if Gideon decides he's not going to leave anything to Abner, you can't say that Abner's Gideon's son, because he, he mentions a William when you're talking about a last name like Johnson. Maybe with a last name like Leet, Chichester, you know, those things where they're the only the only ones in the county, the only ones in the state at that time, yeah, you can pull that off. But you know, I looked in Maury County alone, I think it was 1840, there was like 40 families. Families, <laughs> full families, you know, only head of households mentioned. Meanwhile, when you look at all these, and it, 
again, we've got a mismatch here with where they were born, although um, I'm not too sure about that. I, I've got no proof for a wife, what her name was. It's asserted, repeated, accepted, but it comes down to it. Do we really know that's true? No. Um, and that's the problem. When you get too far back and the underlying records suck and people keep repeating things, theories become graduated into fact and people don't realize it. And the reason why people don't realize it is because there's no quality assigned to the records originally and it's too much work to go back and find all these things. At least as of 10 years ago it would have been too much work. Now got a decent chance. I mean, in a couple days I was able to gather all this stuff off from Ancestry and other things. Google Books, and you know, you put them all together, you got a decent shot at figuring out where the records come from and which ones are just kind of guessed at. Um, so, you know, and then you don't know. I mean, basically, if your ancestor that you're the person you're researching or the family you're researching with didn't get their children baptized at church and their, the county didn't really care about recording births, well, you got to look. you got to hope there's a gravestone. You're dealing with some place like Tennessee where it was just ravished in the Civil War, but even, even without the ravish the ravishment that took place, it was um, people were buried <laughs> hither and yon. I mean, backyards, side of hills. After a while, gravestones sink in the ground. Earthquakes happen, and you know, and you're just that's it. And there's your record, or they get worn out. The t front part peels off. In fact, I'm William Johnson's over here. The front part's uh, peeling off. So you can see how you kind of get to the point where you wonder, well, going back here, let's see, well, I think I've got Obadiah Johnson to back to Robert, and this other guy thinks that this Robert might be the son of Abner, it kind of looks right, but we don't have a will for Abner, and we're not going to find a will for Abner, at least in the books that are published, and... <laughs> Tennessee needs a lot of help. Um, basically, I'll get into this. I, I've noticed that a lot of the time, people doing genealogy in the South just think it's just fine to just kind of post up a compiled history that someone else has come up with. So, for example, I have a, a family that was um, the Brooks family. So I have a, um, my great-grandfather's name was Silas Gustus Book Brooks, and he was the son of, I think, William David Brooks, if I'm remembering this right. Let's go to mine. Okay, here. So I got pretty much. Now, the very fortunate piece of information: this birth, and <clears throat> this birth, and this death record comes from transcriptions of the um, uh, Corinth Cemetery in Iron City, Iron City in Seminole County, Georgia. There's his dad, <clears throat> William David Brooks, and I was able to smith this through. It was very hard. If I didn't have the clue from my grandmother that he had a brother named James, I wouldn't have been able to go back any further. Now, I was able to really work this through um, and follow this William David basically didn't really know what year he was born in. <laughs> His death certificate also says that he's black and I personally know that's probably not true because I have to admit unfortunately there were some um, open Big, uh, bigotry discussions that took place in my lifetime that I've heard from members of this family against the very people that, that the death certificate says that they're <laughs> this that he was black and, and I, so I don't think he was black 
Um, but because of that, I don't care if he was black. If he's black, it's fine. I don't care. I mean, I am who I am. So, but I don't think he was because the children of these people, you know, in the time they lived in, practice segregation or, you know, they think of discriminated against, you know, African Americans, unfortunately. I'll never understand, but anyway, um, this William David, I know had a mother named Susan. I've been told that mother's last name was Quarles. I have no proof that it was Quarles. I have no marriage record. I have no local history from any of the children that says, and the mother of the subject was Susan Quarles. Yet, I've been given a Quarles ancestry that goes all the way back to the 1600s on the Brooks News Group. I'm not putting in my tree. I, for one, know I'm not going to have any way to go in and test it. And two, there's, there's no proof. It could, be, it could be absolutely true, but it could be just made up. I don't know what thought processes were behind the people that had the actual records to kind of put this thing together at one point. Don't know. And there's still, there's some questions here. I mean, here's James, there's William, but in a couple of the censuses, James and William were, you know, they only aged six years in, ten, in a ten-year time period. You know, you know, they didn't know when they were born, really. Um, I was finally able to figure out that he was I knew his uh, birth date was 24 December, and then by looking at the earlier censuses that I had followed back with James with him, um, I'd figured out he was born in um, 1838, and he was from Edgefield, South Carolina. And, and my grandma knew that the Brooks had come out of, uh, well, they thought North Carolina. Um, that's it. So I stopped at William R. Brooks there in South Carolina, and they're really as much as the records as are horrific. They're just absolutely horrible. Um, at least the last time I checked. You know, I might be able to get further, but that's it. Meanwhile, I have uh, ancestors around this time period that happened to be in Connecticut or Massachusetts. Well, those states got their stuff together. They went in and they went to each county in each city, and they put together the tan books, the vital records of this or that town, and they have either from tombstones, court records, or records in the at the county clerk's office of births, marriages, and deaths. And by golly, even back uh, as early as the late 1600s, I'm able to get birth, marriage, and death from most of uh, all the, the siblings in every family I come across. If not, I'm able to get a will, mostly. I mean, there's only one or two, there's an Amos Dodge that just shows up um, that married into um, I, think he, I think he married Mary Webb let's see yeah, yes <laughs> god, I can't believe that <laughs> okay, and this I can get all the way back to Henry Adams be the squire great grandfather of the president, it might at the time that John, time that John Adams was the president. Of course, I don't really have a birth date for Samuel Adams then. I could probably get it now because England's getting better at releasing their birth records. But they say he was born at Barton St. David. Uh, Mary must have been that she married Samuel Webb. This comes out of wild right? records of brain. See my. By the time John Adams was president, my ancestor was um, this John Dodge here, who married Sarah Morris. And, and right here, this is said to be Sarah Peake. I'm not so sure if that's even right, though. I don't know if I... Oh, no. Hannah Levins. I don't know that that's Hannah Levins. I, I, you know, I've got a few problems here and there. Most of them are in the in the, the way corners of Connecticut where they couldn't figure out whether it was Massachusetts or Connecticut so no one bothered to transcribe the work but still some people did for Woodstock they did at least um, or I hadn't figured out where they're from 
anyway, during that time, my my ancestor was um, this John Dodge or his son. Which one of these do I go down? Do I still go down John? I think I might still go to John. No. Esther. Yeah, she married Foster. And they these this is a they were living with the Qu <laughs> near the Quakers at the time. And this Alfred Foster just put, went together absolutely beautifully. Some records that are out there, and I'm trying to get back in the castles. But anyway, for the most part, if you're in Connecticut, Massachusetts, you're okay because the states have bothered to do that stuff. Tennessee is just like, I mean, if you want a birth record, you better hope that someone found the tombstone of your ancestor and took a photograph of it. Or they fought in the Revolutionary War, otherwise, you're SOL. Most of the time, the will records are incomplete. You may get, a, you may get lucky, you know. But for the most part, you're in deep doo doo if your ancestor is in Tennessee. I'll tell you that right now. So it's just a right now the Johnson line. I've got basic path I can go up either with the other direction the family has gone, or or or, or this or this path. And if this guy's right, I mean, hey, there's three siblings that fought in the Revolutionary. Or at least two siblings that fought in the Revolutionary War, plus a sister who married a man that fought in the Revolutionary War. It must have been a anyway. It, there's a lot of history there if we can make the full connection. So I really hope that you know whoever does their stuff in Tennessee would actually make a concerted effort, go county to county, city to city, get the records out of out of the court house, out of whoever at the churches. Uh, whoever records it on the county level, gravestones, court records, just like they did in Massachusetts, publish those things. Birth, marriages, and deaths. There's been sometimes there'll be a book, we'll be say, um, a lot of records of Murray County, Tennessee. Well, you think, well, you got it. You go down there and it's just very sparse, a very small cell. We didn't get all these cities. We didn't get these 15 cities in, in the book, you know, so. It's really disappointing. A lot of the books are even coming out now. Um, anyway, so I'm done. Um, this is where the whole thing's at. Now, this guy that put this thing together also has got some things in there. I've just got, got my eyebrows raising. The only positive thing about it is, is it gives it gives the researcher the only, it's over inclusive. <laughs> you know, the only positive thing you can say about that is, if all this stuff is true, then it it doesn't omit any lead. It, it, this guy's got everything in there that could be true. That's positive. The negative part is, is that we don't really know this stuff is true. I mean, people can, you know, potentially right now, I've spent some time researching ancestors uh, that just don't apply. Uh, but if it's true, this Johnston family would go all the way back to the 1300s. Apparently, their um, their ancestry is recorded in the peerage, but supposedly one of the youngest sons decided to go to Virginia. <laughs> Not that that isn't known to happen. The Chester family did that too. Their that their line uh, surprisingly close to the um, the um, Earl of Donegal line right now. Uh, the Chesters came over to America, uh, but. Yeah, and the only reason why I could say that is because the timeline makes sense between the records that we get out of. Anyway, it's it's a different story, but you know I still don't have proof for it, absolute proof, but I got pretty good circumstantial evidence. Now I would say that this whole thing, as far as the guys, the guy certainly is knowledgeable about all, about all the information that's out there. You know that 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 certainly is true. And there's some people that have done a good amount of research on this this line from different directions, and um, I would say my assessment of the reliability of Robert Johnson being the son of Gideon is what I call limited assurance. That is, I haven't seen anything to 
there are indicators that it's true, and I haven't seen anything to contradict it, but I'm short of proof. Um, the idea that Abner is the son of Gideon, I actually doubt. I have reason to doubt based on what I've seen, but it's worth probably worth it for me to go to the Family History Library and get the will of Gideon Johnson, who died in, um, I think it was Rockingham or Rowan. Yeah, Rockingham County, North Carolina, and probably check in, in um, probably also check in uh, Guilford County there. <laughs> At the time it was Guilford County. Uh, let's see if his will's in, there, uh, and see if they transcribed it right. Because I, I, you know, until I see, I can't, I can't say that this is absolutely untrue until I see that will and find out that it isn't. I do know that in, I, I shouldn't say that with certainty. I, it, I think I've seen in here somewhere in Ab Abner Johnson's pension file, he's got a middle initial M. I mean, I could mean Mordecai, and if I could find other records that make him Abner Mordecai, and I can see that they're trading first and last names like they're going out of style like they did in McCracken, then, well... Um, I'll be inclined to say that he's got him in the will, he's just got him as Mordecai. I also note a few other things. Um, I notice that um, it helps kind of reinforce this, is that there, there are members of the Pillow family and the um, Kenimore family that show up in these pension records and, and and help testify, which kind of brings to mind that they were looking out for their family, but they weren't necessarily telling the court that they were all family members, um, which if that's true, it actually helps the case. And, uh, yeah. Basically, the, the, the situation is we don't have absolute proof. We have... Hmm, it's reasonable to think this might work out, so I'm going to at least take the time to look at the family history. I'm going to, I'm going to order the microfilm for Gideon Johnson's will and see if I can get the date the will was proved, <laughs> for one, <laughs> so that way we know the dates in between in which he died. And we might even find out what city he lived in, uh, instead of just the entirety of Rockingham County. I haven't found a gravestone for him. I would hope I would. Um, and then um, go from there. So things are starting to fizzle out, and the biggest culprits right now are the state of Tennessee, North Carolina, and the state of their records online. Just having marriage records up there is really not good enough. Um, and I encourage these different genealogical societies or whoever the hell might be able to do it to make an effort to go out and get those records and get them up. Okay, I'm done.